Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem two from the hacker rank week of code 38 entitled Minute to Win It. The problem states in a new version of the game Minute to Win It, the math round involves manipulating arrays to meet the given condition. In the challenge, you are given an array of n numbers and an integer k. In one minute, you can change any element of the array to any integer you want. Find the minimum amount of time you have to spend so that the following condition is satisfied. For all i from 1 to n minus 1, the difference between the ith element and the i minus 1th element is equal to k. Uh, so for example, consider that the array 1, 2, 5 and k equal to 2. Then the condition can be satisfied in one minute by replacing the middle element 2 with a 3. So you can see here we initially have 1, 2, 5. The difference between the first two elements is 1 and the second two elements is 4. And if we switch 2 to 3, then uh, we're left with uh, the difference being uh, 2 in both cases, which is equal to k. Therefore, our, satisfy, our condition is satisfied. And so note that the constraints on this problem, uh, the length of our Ray is going to be uh, between 2 and 10 to the 5th, uh, k is going to be less than 10 to the 5th, and uh, all the elements in our array are going to be, uh, uh, the absolute value of all the elements in our array are going to be less than 10 to the 5th. So let's take a look at uh, the example that HackerRank provided us with. So here we have uh, n equal to 6, which is the number of elements in our array, and k equal to 2. And so this is the initial uh, example, but for visual purposes, we are going to change 2 to negative 3 and 85 to 0. And if we visually map this, this is what it looks like. So the question is basically asking us to find a line that goes through the uh, maximum number of points. Uh, that's just another way of phrasing this question, because the question originally asks, What's the minimum number of minutes? In other words, what's the minimum number of points that we need to change so that we can get an increasing sequence where the difference between adjacent elements is always equal to k? And so in this example, we can clearly see uh, that the line uh, going through these four points is going to be the, the best option. And so we only need to move two of these points. Uh, so we're going to move the first one uh, to 3, and we're going to move the second one to 11, and once we've done that, we'll end up with this. Uh, so we're going to cover three different approaches to solving this problem. Only approach three will get you full points, uh, but this is sort of how I went through the problem initially. Uh, so the first approach is going to be a quadratic, and that's going to get you four points. The second approach is going to be not really quadratic. It's sort of an optimized version, um, and it's going to get you almost full points, and then you're going to need either an n log n or a linear solution, uh, which we'll look at with approach three. So so for approach one, uh, we're just going to look at the code because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, basically what we have here is a nested for loop over n, which we know is 10 to the 5th, uh, possibly 10 to the 5, so that we know this is going to time out for most cases. And all we're doing here is for each of these elements, we are going to uh, reverse engineer what the starting point would be uh, for our first element if we work backwards and subtract two for each of these. So our first element obviously is just going to use its own value. Our second element, uh, we're going to subtract two from it. So the starting point for this element, for a line to go through this element, would be negative five. Uh, this would be uh, one, one, one and then negative 10. So using each one of these values, we're basically going to uh, create a starting point, and then we're gonna do a plus equals uh, k to our point for every iteration. And so we basically have each of the points that would be in this line as it goes through one of these points. And we're just checking that the element at j, if it's not equal to this point, we're no, we know we're gonna have to move it. And we're gonna do this for every single starting point. We which gives us the quadratic uh, runtime. And for each of these lines that goes through one of these points, we're checking, uh, you know, is this a better solution than what we found so far? Uh, and all we're doing here is we initialize our answer to be n. And at any point when a t, the number of points that we had to move to the current line that we're looking at is less than our answer, we're just gonna reset answer. 
Uh, but like I said, this is only going to get you four points out of 20 because it's a quadratic solution. Uh, so let's take a look at the second approach. So the second approach is very similar to the first approach, um, but the optimization is that it's not going to check every single starting point. The only starting points it's going to check are those that occur um, for adjacent elements with a difference of two. So if we look at this array, we're going to look at each of the differences, and any time those the difference is equal to two, we are going to add it to our unordered set of starting points. So you can see here we declare uh, this is just a hash set, and we're going to loop through our array, and we are going to check if the difference between the two elements that we're currently looking at is equal to k. If so, insert this starting point, which we're getting by taking the element and subtracting i times k. So just if we're at the sec or the third element here, we would end up subtracting, uh, you know, two times two because we're at uh, the second or the third element, and that would give us one. Um, so we would only do that when we hit five and seven and seven and nine because these uh, three elements have differences of two. Uh, so this unordered set from this uh, data or this array is only going to give us one starting point. So it's going to be drastically faster. So in some cases it could be quadratic uh, but most cases aren't going to have a full set. You know k would have to be equal to basically one and uh, if k is greater than one, you're never going to end up with the x, which is the number of starting points in your hash set being equal to n. Um, so this is going to get you 18.67 points out of 20, uh, but it misses certain cases. And the case that it misses is, is, is what if none of the elements, uh, the adjacent elements, um, are actually next to each other uh, for our optimal line. So you could imagine that if we get rid of the 7 here, our starting point, we're, we're not going to actually generate any starting points. And so we would end up returning n minus 1, which is saying that we would have to move uh, all the elements except for one in order to get them in a line. But we know that's not true. If this was, say, zero, we know that we don't need to move the one, five, and nine. We'd only need to move the negative three, the zero, and the zero here. So it misses that case. Um, but our third approach uh, will uh, make sure that it gets this case. Uh, so for approach three, if we go back to our original example, you can see uh, something neat about this picture, and that's that if we add a arbitrary uh, line with a slope equal to k to our graph, that all of the elements that'll be in the optimal line that we choose in terms of moving points so that they form a full line, all of those elements are going to have the same diff uh, distance to this line. Um, and so what we want to do is just choose this arbitrary line and then create a hash map where the key is the difference and the value is the count of the number of points in our array that have this difference to our line. Uh, and once we do that, we know that n minus the difference for that line is going to be the number of points that we need to move. So for this example, uh, if we were to create a hash map, um, we'd end up with four points all sharing the same difference and then uh, two other points with uh, just a count of one. And then all we would need to do is loop through this hash map for each pair and uh, check to see what n minus the uh, count is. And so when we hit uh, the pair that's storing the difference for these four elements, we're going to have n equal to six minus our four points is going to give us two, which is these two remaining uh, points here, which we'd know we'd have to move. So. Uh, this is a linear time, uh, alg linear runtime algorithm that's going to uh, take care of all the cases, the ones that we missed in approach number one uh, due to runtime, and the ones we uh, missed in approach number two due to uh, the you know not having adjacent elements with the uh, correct difference. 
so let's take a look at the code for this. So here is our C++ solution. We have our function minute to minute that takes two parameters, a vector of integers a and an integer k, and returns an integer which will represent the minim minimum number of points that we need to move. So at the top here, we're initializing a variable j, a long, long j equal to zero. So j will represent the current point in our arbitrary line. Note that it needs to be a long, long. It will fail a couple solutions if it's an integer due to the due to our constraints on k and the size of a so uh, because these can be up to 10 to the fifth uh, our current point can end up being greater than the maximum bound on an integer then we declare our hash map where the key is going to be a long long representing the difference and our value is going to be a count of the number of occurrences that that difference occurs and then we have a range based for loop in which we loop over each element in a we are going to take the difference between our current point and our arbitrary line and our element e in a and if uh, it exists in our hash map we are going to do a pre-increment on the current value if not we'll insert a zero and then do a pre-increment on that zero and once we've done this we'll do a plus equals k to j in order to get us the next point in our arbitrary line so once we've completed this range base for loop we just need to make uh, a call to max element with a custom lambda that will give us the maximum uh, pair by the value so ultimately we're calling second on this pair so we're just taking the length of our array a and subtracting it uh, from it the maximum value in our hash map and this will give us the minimum number of points that we need to move Taking a look at the Java solution, it's slightly different. Um, instead of taking uh, the maximum value, we are going to declare an integer answer, initialize this to n minus uh, one, declare our uh, variable long j, similar to our C++ solution, declare our hash map m, uh, do the same thing we did, uh, except instead of a range-based for loop, we have an enhanced for loop. The syntax for doing a uh, post or pre-increment to a value in our map is slightly different, but the same idea using the get or default with a plus one on that and then the put method and uh, of course the same plus equals k to j and here we have an, another enhanced for loop over each of the elements in our hash map and we're resetting answer to be the minimum of our current value and n minus uh, the current value for the pair that we are currently looking at and once we've done all this we just return our answer and for our final solution in Python, uh, probably the most elegant and the simplest, uh, we declare our variable j uh, representing the point in our arbitrary line, declare our hash map m, uh, then for in each element e and a, uh, we're doing our post or pre-increment, I guess with a plus one, to our element, uh, our value in our hash map, and then the plus equals k to j, and then we don't need a fancy lambda, and a max element you know and then arrow second we can just go the number of elements in a uh, given by len a uh, minus the max of our uh, values in our hash map m and uh, this will have the same results as our previous two solutions. So as mentioned a couple times in this video uh, the runtime of this algorithm is going to be linear. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.